Hi, welcome to Paper Crafting with Rebecca. I'm Rebecca. So today I thought I would show you a little trick I do with doilies I buy at the Dollar Tree. So this isn't sponsored by Dollar Tree or anything. It's just that um, I like to share some little ideas with you. So I buy this whole big pack of 32 um, doilies, all different sizes, uh, for a dollar at the Dollar Tree. Now, some of the techniques are kind of the obvious thing, so we're not going to go into a lot of depth on those. But I want to show you just a couple um, techniques that you may not have thought about, or if you have thought about them, maybe you haven't used in a while, and this will inspire you to use them again. So bear with me while I get the camera turned around, and then let's play with some Dollar Tree doilies. Okay, so there's the obvious things you can do, such as what I did on this card where I just glued the doily straight down and then decorated the uh, card on up using the doily. Here's a scrapbook page, again, where you just take the doily and put it straight onto the uh, page. But that's the fairly obvious things. Let's play with some other ideas. Lots of us have paper doll stamps or um, at least die cuts, perhaps, that cut out the shapes. Um, perhaps you know how to draw really well and you draw um, the paper doll silhouette or maybe you have some vintage paper dolls that you are turning into cards or scrapbooking projects. But for today I'm just going to use um, my paper doll die cut that I have and cut my silhouette with that. So there I have my little silhouette of my paper doll. Um, what we're going to end up making is this little bridal shower card that I made. Um, it's basically using doilies and a little silhouette. Um, you can use any background stamp that you have. So to start with, you just need a piece of, I just use a piece of scrap doily, a new doily, and a little bit of ribbon. I'm cutting up into her arm, um, separating her arm from her body a little bit because I want the dress to come up high enough on her that it covers her so it doesn't look like she's wearing a skirt. Now at this point I just kind of fist and fudge it with it until I get it to how I like the look of. Um, I try to make it so that the dress top looks like a little dress top. In this case it's sloped too much so I'm going to kind of go to a different spot. And there we go. And it's kind of more rounded up there. So I want it to look like that little strapless gown. Okay once I get it on there um, I just work on it from the back so that it's a little bit form fitting on her. The nice thing is with a scrap piece of doily you can just kind of cut off the pieces that you don't want. I'm going to use a little tiny piece of scotch tape just to hold it in place. It's not going to show anyway when you glue it on the card and it just kind of gives you more um, hands basically to work with. I'm going to cut off that little other piece of scrap doily and I save it and I'll use it on a different project. Again, I'm using just a little bit of scotch tape to hold it so I can see how it looks. Wow, that looks almost cute enough to use it just like a little dress, doesn't it? But let's go ahead with the seam. Now, I don't fold it in half. I fold it short of a half. Then I flip it over, find the middle, and fold. One of the things you do not want to do is don't fold it all the way. See, I leave it wide. I don't make a little triangle, perfect triangle out of that. I leave the top to have so I have a waistband. I have to press it down a little bit better than I had it so that it folds easier. And that way I'll have my little waistband on her dress. Again, I'm going to use a little bit of scotch tape just to make sure that holds down really well. And then get the general idea of how that's going to look. Once I like that, then I just want to take some liquid adhesive. I suggest using liquid adhesive on this so you have a little bit of, you know, fudge factor to kind of move it around um, and make sure that you have because see it was crooked so I, like, I had to turn it and then when I look at her from the front it's still kind of crooked so I have to kind of just adjust but once you get it adjusted um, it makes a real cute little bridal looking sort of dress or it could be a first communion dress or if you have a childlike paper doll or it could be um, you know a prom dress if you wanted to use a different color if you wanted to color your doily quinceanera could be all sorts of fun fun little dresses I stuck just a little bit of liquid adhesive on the inside of that because her dress was popping up so much. And I put that ribbon across for her little waistband and tape and I mean glue that down. And there you have her little uh, silhouette with her dress on. And I just put her on the front of that card and then added some embellishments.
So that's one idea with the Dollar Tree doily. Another idea is I've taken my card base here and I'm just going to tape it down to my work area so I have it to work with and I'm going to use my doily as a stencil. Now as you see I've used this doily before when I did a blue and green um, stenciling with it. I always save these. I use them until I can't get any more color onto them and then I'll show you what to do with the colored doily here in just a minute. But I'm just basically doing some randomness for a background on my base card. You can use any colors you want, the inks you want to use. Um, I'm For this card I'm deciding to use some of the purples and the raspberries and blue sort of tones. Um, but you can use whatever colors you want and I'll show you in a minute some different colored ones. This just gives a nice background with where you can uh, you can set your own colors without being real obvious and it's it has it adds a bit of a texture to the card, um, a feeling of texture. Of course, there is no real dimension, but you have the feeling that there is because of the different shading. And I'm just continuing on randomly putting some of this raspberry down. And then I use my blending brush to kind of blend the colors because I don't want any white on the front of the card for this particular background. So first I'm putting my base of my stenciling down and then I will go back and, and blend that nicer. But this gets it started. Now I've already had used the blue on this doily so I'm just going back over the same blue spot to conserve my doily. I know I got the whole pack for a dollar but I'm still real conservative <laughs> and use every bit of everything. Um, just so as not to waste it. And this doesn't take real long to make for a background. It, it's just a nice way to pull any colors that you might want to pull into your background. And there I'm just kind of doing a little bit more blending. And I decided I needed just a little bit more of the uh, purple tone there. So I'm going back over that spot and adding that. Now I'm just going to go in and kind of blend some some colors there. As you see, so that I don't get it real dark on my card base, I'm kind of brushing it off onto the doily, onto the center part of the doily, just using that. Because again, it doesn't hurt to color your doily all the way up because I'll show you what to do with a colored doily here in just a minute. So I'm just saves me um, putting it on my mat so much. Okay, here's a card I made using that same idea but in some different colors. Makes for a nice little background. It doesn't jump out at you real harsh but it gives kind of a patterned paper feel back there. Also did it on this card although I ended up putting a big picture on there so it covered up most of it but I did do it on that card as well. You'll see behind my little gnome picture that I made that there's some um, of that stenciling. Here's the one we just did that you watched me do the stenciling on. I made this into a butterfly love card and I did the same. That was the one that we just did that you watched. Okay so now you end up with doilies that have ink on them. Well we can't waste that can we? It's pretty in itself. So I find the uh, I center there. I don't crease it real hard just a little bit and I'm going to cut the center out right here just by hand. And I'm leaving myself a little bit of an edge. I don't want to cut it all the way down to the lacy part. I'm leaving myself a little bit of edge. And then I generally pick the darkest color and cut that right through the middle so that I'll end up with some dark on either end of my ruffle. Because that's what we're going to do is make a ruffle. Okay, about now my phone rang, but I'm back. And um, I'm just going to put some adhesive, a line of adhesive across my patterned paper cardstock out of my stash. Now when I start this you'll notice I have it hanging over the edge of the card. Do not start it even with that because you want to have enough doily left over to fold over the edge of your patterned piece. And I'm just basically just creating a little ruffle. It will straighten out because it's in a strip. You can just kind of coax it into a nice straight line and put it across there. Now my line on this particular one didn't end up exactly straight 
but I'm gonna put a ribbon over it and ribbon is amazing. It covers up all sorts of mistakes. <laughs> um, so you'll see what I did here. I just put the ribbon over it and I put a little embellishment over it and there you have the doily used again, but to make a ruffle. Okay, thank you for joining me today. I hope that you got some ideas on how to use these doilies. They're only, you know, like I said, you get a whole pack of them for a dollar and they're made out of paper, so they're perfect for our paper crafting. I'll be back for more videos, so please be sure to like and subscribe and happy paper crafting!